Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. I'm gonna do something different today. I'm gonna tell a little bit of storytelling since it's Halloween. I don't really celebrate Halloween for personal reasons, but I figured you'd like some history and some scary spooky stories. So we're here today in Ivale. I'm parked on the backside by um, Costco. So you can park there too and you can park on the garage on Ivale Road, but this is the Dole Cannery. And if you know about it as a local, it's been here since 1907. So very old, a lot of history. It's no longer a cannery and it has pretty much been closed down since 1991, I think. But as you can tell, it's pretty much the same and they turned it into a mall. You can see what the cannery looked like. It kind of looks factory-like. Doesn't really look like a mall at all. And I don't know, I get some vibes here. That's pretty dark. And I'll tell you some stories about here because I used to work here as one of my first jobs when I was uh, 21, I think, after college, coming back home from Massachusetts. It was one of the only jobs I could get because 9-11 happened and it was really hard to get a job because the economy wasn't so good, but I haven't been here since. There's really no reason for me to be here, but there's a place I'm going to go to to pick up lunch after some storytelling, but you can see how desolate it is. There's actually a Starbucks in there too. And some food courts. But I will say a lot of businesses here don't last very long and I don't know if it's bad luck or the vibes here. But if you didn't know, this was built on a hail. And this particular hail, because hails have different purposes back in the ancient Hawaiian days was a sacrificial blood sacrifice heiau. So we'll go out to the front of the main area. I will say being a security guard here sucked. You would have to stand at this podium all day. At the time the manager that managed this building would not let you sit down so your feet hurt. I believe it was five dollars and 25 cents or something like that for minimum wage at that time. But here across the way is the Regal Cinemas. We'll go across the street here. And just to let you know, if you're not interested in this at all, you can skip to the next chapter, which I'll bookmark to the food actually. But if you're interested in the storytelling for Halloween, then that's cool. But this is the elevator you would take to the ballroom. There's a lot of stories about the ballroom. It's no longer open anymore. I think due to COVID, it didn't have business and closed down, but you can rent a ballroom to have parties there and a lot of people said the thing was really haunted and there was a lot of activity there um, you would hear voices plates crashing stuff like that and people that had to close it down just wanted to get the hell out of there these are the old escalators that used to take you to the ballroom but because it's out of business you no longer can go there this is the Regal Cinemas. I'm obviously here a little bit early, but it used to be a state-of-the-art 18 entertainment theater complex. Still running today. You can get your tickets there. But there is Theater 14, I believe, is very haunted. Supposedly, there's an older man that... Um, comes and visits you in that theater. I don't remember ever going to that particular theater 14, but um, that's what a lot of people say. Right now we're exiting the theater, still on the same side, because Bill Canary is on both sides of Evelay Road. And you can see here on the side, not too many businesses. Um, it used to have the Strawberry Connection. That was a very famous place to eat and it went out of business. Now there's a Korean restaurant. 
What I wanted to show you though is a secret spot that nobody would even go in, but I have a story here where if you go around here, around the corner, we had a key to a special restroom and it's over here in this hallway. And I remember using the restroom and hearing children screaming and crying. And um, it freaked me the hell out. And later on, I found out from a fellow security guard that a school bus crashed against the wall here and killed a bunch of children in the 80s. And I think the wall is right here where it used to be. So it's pretty, uh, lots of activity here. If you look that way, I don't know if you can see my finger because it's dark, but this building right here houses all the radio stations, most of the major radio stations on FM radio here in Oahu. So you got KSSK here, um, the alternative station and the hip hop station, I forget now, I don't even listen to radio, um, but they're all in here and that place is super haunted. Uh, you can't get up there unless you're invited. You have to have security let you up obviously because of the famous radio personalities up there but if you go up one of the hallways up there I thought it was a bank vault it's a big shiny silver vault looking thing that looks like a bank vault but it uh, actually was a morgue for Pearl Harbor bodies so they stored bodies in there and I don't know what they store in them now but when you walk in there the carpet's pretty brightly colored the lighting's bright but you just get this very dark feeling and then there's a skyway up there that used to take you to the ballroom area. I'm sure it's closed off on the other side. But you can see, even though they try to make it modern, this is the original cannery building. So if you go on this entrance, that one is a different address. That houses offices. I don't know if they're still there, but I used to speak to a lady that used to smoke out on the benches there when it was legal to smoke near the outside of a building and she said she worked for the B Department of Education so if you enter here it still has an elevator that takes you up to these higher floors um, and she would say the same thing nobody would like to stay late because if you use the bathroom you'd hear babies screaming and crying and then the toilets started flushing on their own but they were not automatic flush uh, toilets so um, she was really creeped out and the interesting thing is I had to let um, window washers up there. You can only let them up through the fire escape, the stairwell. And if you notice, when I first worked here, I had to go up the elevator and I noticed there was no third floor. thought that was strange, but there is a third floor. The elevator just won't take you there. It's blocked off because that whole third floor used to be also storage for bodies for Pearl Harbor. And I guess it filled up pretty I mean, it's a big space, it pretty much filled up. And if it filled up that much and then they had them over here, that's a lot of bodies. So lots of sadness here, lots of lost souls besides the heiau. And I don't know if we can go there and see the elevator to see what I'm talking about. But um, if you go on the third floor, nobody wants to rent it out. So Kaiser rented it out to store their paperwork for their patients. So it's like a storage area. I'm not sure who rents it anymore, if Kaiser still rents. But um, the third floor does exist and it's pretty much an empty warehouse space that's pretty spooky. Hopefully I don't get kicked out or get in trouble, but I just want to show the elevator. I have no reason to go upstairs. But I want to see if it still has the third floor button. All right, so I had to wait for a little bit, but yeah, you don't see a third floor. Six, seven, four, five, one, two. And that's the fire escape to get to it. And I guess we'll go back inside. All right, we're back outside from the office building. If you go that way, you can see real zombies down Evelay Road and Sumner. Just joking, that's my really sarcastic um, humor. But this is also part of the cannery that nobody really uses. I guess view halls there. But you can see the old 
font and markings on the building that say, I think it's the American Canning Company. And I would not come here at night if you're not familiar with this area. Um, it's not the safest place, but in the daytime, nobody really bothers you. Yeah, so there it is. You can see the American Can Company. I'm not sure if you can see it, because it's very bright. But this is a super old building. All of this was built around 1907, but still stands here today. I think the parking garage is the only um, kind of newer thing that they built for the theater. But I don't know. A lot of people used to work here as kids in high school for their summer job canning pineapple. I remember passing Nimitz Highway um, when we used to go to Ala Moana Beach Park. You could smell the sweet smell of pineapple and see the big old aluminum or metal pineapple thing that stood up in the skyline that they got rid of. Um, I'm sure a lot of locals remember that. It's like old nostalgia. I will show one more thing before I get my food. Here's the old school gate. It's all rusty and stuff with this old pineapple. It's still here. I like the old, you know, build of the gate. I like stuff like that. And right here, I guess, was a guard shack. And it was there when I worked here and it was abandoned still. And um, I guess they boarded it up, but before you could see through the bars and it was just trash in there and dust. But pretty old architecture here. And if you go back that way, that's Home Depot and Costco. Over here in the back is a bathroom that we used to always use, or a restroom, whatever you want to call it. And I remember hearing um, like noises, like somebody was in the bathroom and footsteps and voices. But um, when I looked under the stall, there was only one other stall. Uh, no one was there as well. So I think the ghosts like to hang out in the restroom for some reason. But yeah, in its bustling days, there was many shops upstairs and a ballet company. And now if you go inside, it looks so ghetto. You can't even access upstairs with the um, escalator. Not sure if you can go up these stairs, but um, here is some old cannery machinery they got. But honestly, if you're a tourist, I would skip this one and just go to Dole Plantation, unless you're really into Hawaii history. And back here was where the pineapple used to stand, but it's been torn down. And I believe they said they saved the pieces in a warehouse somewhere or something. But that's sad that they got rid of it. Anywho, let's go outside and eat some food. All right, I'm here at Kaka'ako Waterfront Park, and I'm not sure if you can see me because it's super bright out. Um, interesting thing, the planes are landing right here, going straight. Usually they go around the island and land coming from uh, Nanakuli side to Kapolei and Eva Beach. But where I went to in Dole Canary is the Olena by Chef Ron Simon. And I have featured that before when I first began. You can see the link above. I'll put a card up there that you can click on if you want to see the old video. It's probably very terrible because I just started doing YouTube, so not too much B-roll in there of the food and stuff, but I learn as I go along. Um, hopefully you can hear me because the planes are landing. Totally the worst place to pick, but usually they land the other way, but for some reason they want to land today right above me but anyway they're famous for their red wine beef stew and i didn't get it last time i also really enjoy their prime rib plates when they have it as a special uh, today's special was veggie empanadas so that uh, is interesting so if you're vegetarian they do have a lot of vegetarian options they do banh mi's somen salad bowls and things like that they also have really pretty delicious drinks and desserts which i will show you later so I'm gonna try some potato first. This is some chunky potatoes. They've got carrots in here as well. Just by eating that potato first, you can really taste that rich beef broth in the beef stew. And you know, I don't know what the difference is with red wine in a beef stew, but it's very rich and beefy in flavor. Let's take a big chunk of beef. Look at that chunky, big, morsel of beef. Right. 
really soft and tender beef. I can't fit it all in my mouth, it's huge. Definitely can't go wrong with beef stew and rice. It's like, just goes so well together. I like kimchi with it. It's one of my favorite meals. Hawaiian beef stew, rice, and kimchi. Really weird, but it really tastes ono. And like I've said before, I'm a weirdo. Don't eat cooked carrots, but it's in there. There's pretty big chunks of it. I don't know why, but I do like raw carrots, but I don't like them cooked. And you get a pretty good amount of beef in here. Um, I got two potatoes and three carrots and uh, a lot of beef. Pretty meaty chunks, so can't complain. Um, they changed to these plastic containers, which is good. You can meal prep and do all that. But they are quite smaller than the uh, older big plate lunches they used to use, the regular plate lunch box. But at least it won't leak through because it is saucy, because nowadays they have to use those paper compostable boxes and you can't use styrofoam here. So um, that is a good thing because I hate when it soaks through. And there's also some celery pieces in here, but they're very tiny, but it does give the stew flavor. All right, let's check out their salad. Looks pretty much the same like the last time they make their own house vinaigrette. So it pretty much looks like spring greens, a cherry tomato, and all the veggies are fresh. There's a cucumber in here as well. It has mustard in the dressing, but I like it. It's, um, I'm not a fan of mustard, but this one's good and it's got a really refreshing taste to it. It's not too sweet and um, kind of really goes well with the cucumber and the uh, lettuce. And there's a nice cherry tomato. This video is probably gonna get very long because of the storytelling in the beginning, but pretty much this beef stew is bomb. It's very tender, very beefy in flavor. Portions might be smaller than it used to be because of this newer container, but the quality of the ingredients and what Chef Simon does is amazing. Love the food there. Um, you can't go wrong with any of the choices you uh, make if you pick whatever foods that he makes that day. Uh, beef stew is always on the menu every day. It's one of his favorite uh, famous things or what they're known for. And you can even buy this frozen to prepare later at home. So you can buy that as well in containers. So I got two other um, things to show and uh, I'm gonna make it quick since this video is probably gonna be very long, but I've got their Royal Filipino iced tea. They do have a regular Filipino iced tea which has calamansi in it. I've shown that in the other video, it's very delicious, but this is a newer item since I haven't been there in a while. This is um, the Royal Filipino iced tea it has coconut bits in there it looks like. I don't know if it's like some pineapple or mango, but it's some kind of yellow fruit on the bottom. And this part is lemonade. So this is the Filipino lemonade underneath. And of course the top, uh, just like Sweet Corner Cafe that I went to last week, has the beautiful purple and bluish butterfly pea flower. And actually this one actually has the flowers floating in it. I'll show it to you. So let's try this and I'm gonna shake it up so we can get all the stuff mixed together. Ooh, that's good. You definitely taste the calamansi in there. Very strong calamansi flavor, which I like. That's a little kumquat looking thing. It's citrus and used in Filipino cuisine a lot. The only thing is they give you the smaller straw. I'm not sure if I wasn't looking in the right place, but they uh, you have to serve yourself your own straws, napkins and forks and such at a utensil bar. But maybe I didn't see a bigger straw, but the um, little pieces of fruit get stuck in there. It's hard to suck. Definitely pineapple. It's very sweet. But when you don't get the chunks of pineapple, it's not too sweet, which is also good. It's not like sickening sweet. It's just right. And once in a while, when you suck up that, those little diced pieces of pineapple and fruit on the bottom, it's kind of like a surprise in your mouth. Really pretty drink, really good. Definitely different from Sweet Corner Cafe. They're both delicious, but this one is more of a calamansi flavor. So each restaurant, you know, showcases different things in different ways. So a good interpretation of this. And last for dessert is their banana poi bread, which they put upside down in a cup. 
Uh, these are the bites because I didn't want to buy a whole loaf, but you may get a whole loaf if you really enjoy the banana poi bread. So uh, obviously it's banana bread, but they mix poi in it and it's supposed to make it a little bit more um, moister, not as dry. So let's see what it's about. So here it is, like a square little cake. Definitely really moist inside. Some people hate that word, but I don't know how else to describe it. It's not dry, it's not dense, it's fluffy. It's very sweet and it has a really strong banana taste. Um, if you're not a fan of poi, you definitely don't taste it in here, but it's good and nutritious and um, it's good to have it in this baked good. Yeah, so I don't taste any, you know, poi, same as poi malasadas. I don't really taste it in there. It's just nice and sweet and a great dessert. All right, I'm gonna end this video, a uh, little bit of a conclusion and some other information on it. I do like their new location. They've been there for a while. They've moved from Republican Street near Kalihi Kai a few years ago. That's where I did my first video. Although that place had parking, I think there's a little bit more options to park in Dole Cannery. Uh, you can park on the Costco side, but more towards the back entrance of Dole Cannery. Sometimes it can, can get crowded, but it's not as crowded as the actual Costco side where the front door of Costco is. So it's more on the Houghton Depot side. Um, or you can park in the garage above the Regal Theaters and get your uh, ticket validated. It shouldn't be a problem as long as you're a patron of the Dole Cannery. Um, you shouldn't be paying for parking if you don't stay too long. Uh, the lady in the front is a character. She's hilarious. She has a great personality and she's very generous. Uh, last time she gave me cookies to try and a really interesting personality and really brightens your day. So if you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. It is a bit pricey, but it is, you know, food that is a little bit more upscale in a plate lunch form. So um, things are a little bit fancier. And if you're not into that, I hope you just enjoy looking at the food. But if you're into upscale plate lunches and want to try something different, but still has a local vibe, definitely check out Elena by Chef Ron Simon. If you've never been there, uh, because now it's so much easier to go to and they do have odd hours, so it might be hard for some to go to, but they're open at 11 a.m. and they're closed on certain days. And then they, I think, close at 2 p.m. So their hours are very limited. And it seems like they're already sold out. By the time I got there at opening, some of the things were already sold out. And the reason why is I ordered before going there. So a lot of their patrons order online on their page. I'll put everything in the description box below, including their IG and website. But I order online because things go quick. And like I said, I walked in at 10.57 actually. It wasn't even 11, they opened early and this lady wanted some hollow hollow which is their special of the month and it's soon to be gone um, and she got the last one so all these people ordered way before the damn thing opened because you can put a timer on the ordering and uh, put the thing on there on when you want to pick it up so they kind of can tell what is going to be sold out for the day so definitely get there quick because it's quite popular so thank you for watching and hopefully you found this informative and helpful on a new place to eat. And I'll see you again next week. Like and subscribe if you're new. And have a great weekend, everyone. Peace out.